Hi. Um, the idea I want to talk about today is essentially an idea about encouraging families, middle class families, if that's not too controversial, educationally affluent families, to live in Dublin city centre. It's also an idea about scale and exploring the virtue of smallness, as the economist E.F. Schumacher wrote about in his uh, very influential books, Small is Beautiful, a study of economics as if people mattered, very revolutionary concept in 1973. I suppose a third angle to the idea is it's about housing for public good, but not public housing as we know it. And essentially, it's just an idea that puts a new shape on existing ideas. The question I'm asking is, can one house, Dublin House, change Dublin's identity? And I suppose the first thing you have to say, well, what is Dublin's identity? I think there are kind of four things that need to happen if you're going to do a project that brings about transformation, positive change, that it's a catalyst. And those four things are, there has to be a real hunger for the idea. There has to be an opportunity. You know, you've got to find some way of um, exploring the idea that's real, rooted in reality. There has to be permission. You've got to find one, some way, a way of communicating the idea and, uh, I suppose, getting buy-in. And then finally, you've got to execute the idea. And I know that sounds blindingly obvious, but actually, the part of the idea that rarely gets to happen is the happening part of the idea. So we've got to make it happen. So looking at the first element, the first ground condition, it's hunger. What we're looking at is what is Dublin's need, what is Dublin's identity? And if you take the city centre as being the place within the canals, it has been developed in an extraordinarily way in the last 10, 15 years. It's a very dynamic place, very vibrant. We have all these uh, multinationals who want to uh, place their HQ in the city. It's fantastic, but it's not a great city. Great cities are about more than places where it's, it's a great place to work, it's a great place to shop, and it's a great place for spectacle. We have all those. Great cities are places where people want to live, where people want to live with the people who are most precious to them, and that's their families and their kids. And that's not happening in the city. So if you look at um, who is living in the city and, and, and how they're living, you see that actually more than well over 50% of the homes in the city centre are private rented accommodation, fine, houses and apartments. About another 20% is social housing, which is also rented. And the remainder is uh, owner-occupied. OK, maybe that's not a problem. I mean, isn't that what cities are about? They're supposed to be fluid and dynamic and diverse. And we have a great diversity in our, in our city, lots of new Irish. But uh, actually, uh, it is a problem because we don't have the diversity of families wanting to live and put down roots in the city centre. Only about 50% of, of the electorate actually vote. But in the city centre, only 20% of people over 18 actually vote. And that, to me, is a disconnected, disenfranchised city. And that's what we have to change, and that's the hunger. So what's the opportunity? Well, the opportunity, bizarrely, was born out of the economic crisis. It's essentially about looking at that, our friend's Schumacher idea, idea about, you know, why small can be as good as big, and why sometimes small is a more effective humane solution than the big, gigantic solution. So for Dublin City Council, we have lots and lots of housing complexes around the city, and we want to regenerate them, and we hoped to regenerate them through what we called public-private partnerships. And that idea is that you, you, you take a, a whole complex and where hundreds of families are living, and you say to one developer, uh, let's execute a contract where you will redevelop homes for the people who are living there, and that's fine, because we don't we don't actually want to move any of our tenants out. And, but in the process, in redeveloping those homes, you'll also be able to build lots of private homes. And, but that economic model collapsed in 2008, and all of the contracts collapsed. So we were left with regeneration projects that had no 
development model. The one I'm talking to you today is a, is a site on Dominic Street, where we're actually going to build social housing, public housing, on the east side, on the vacant site. Hopefully a school is going to be uh, built beside that. But we have to look at how we develop the west side as private homes, which kind of brings me on to the second opportunity, which is an architectural or a physical opportunity. Dominic Street in living memory was a Dublin house street. It was developed in plots by the Georgians in 1756, and only really fell derelict in the 1950s, and that's when we built our social housing. But one thing about our Georgian streets and Dominic Street, as it used to be, was it had this character that is intrinsically Dublin. I mean, our most pristine streets, say like the streets around Marion Square, and our more ramshackle streets, like Moore Street, they all actually have and share a common language, which is called Dublinese. And they have incredible character and incredible vibrancy. So I think there's an opportunity to develop incrementally in plots in a way which doesn't sacrifice this holy grail, which is density in uh, apartments, but which maybe does it in a slightly more humane way, in a, in a way that, uh, I suppose, breaks down the scale into manageable portions which people might feel more interested in buying into because they can have a great sense of ownership. And I suppose that's the final uh, opportunity, which is that it's a social opportunity. Because we have to really think about how we do offer people a real choice about how they might raise their kids in the city centre. I mean, pe people don't leave the city centre out of badness. It's because they're anti-urban. What happens is they're happy in the city centre, it suits their needs, and then they have their first child. And any of you who've had a child knows that you look, in, look at that baby and suddenly you see the world through different eyes and your priorities change completely. So, for instance, uh, this week was the back to school week and all of those little munchkins that started school, five years ago their parents made a choice about where they were going to live and that choice was about schools, parks, and it was about who are those, their kids going to play with. And if they were living in an apartment in the city centre, they said, I don't know who my kid is going to be playing with because my neighbour changes every six months. So, in this transition town, we aren't actually offering people an opportunity to put down roots. But maybe if we offered people a real choice, neither the four-bedroom house, which are in, you know, red brick terraced house, which is in limited supply, or the two-bedroom apartment. Say we said to them, what if you could design your own apartment in the city centre to meet your needs today, to meet your needs tomorrow? And that creative opportunity might just get people thinking. And also, if we said to them, what if you could come together with a group, two friends, or your parents even, your brother, your sister, and say, let's develop an apartment building in the city centre and we live together. And we can design it exactly the way we want. I want a conservatory, I'm going to design a conservatory. I want my bedrooms tiny, so I'm going to have my bedrooms tiny, but I'm going to have a huge living room. I want a place for a grand piano. Design it the way you want it. I think people might take that opportunity. So the third aspect of this is permission, getting buy-in. The one thing that designers are really good at doing is unlocking permission. Really brilliant design is invisible. Nobody knows the thing's been designed, it just works perfectly. So in 2009, which October 2009, uh, for the Innovation Dublin Festival, we ran a one-day competition in Smithfield, uh, aided and abetted by this wonderful group of young architects called Now What, who had come out of UCD, and uh, Alice Clancy, Fiona Hughes, and James Ross O'Hare. So they ran this competition uh, for us, and we invited teams to come along, mostly students, 16 groups appeared on the day, and each was given a plot on Dominic Street. We took the historic map and we said, each of you gets one of these plots. Now, what we want you to do is design an apartment building for that plot. 
Imagine the kind of families that might want to live in your apartment building, designed for them. But you are going to have to pay, obey certain rules, so what I said was, just think river dance. If, you, if we all obey the rules, we will actually develop something that is made up of individual proposals, but collectively has great power. It was actually an incredible success, inspiring day, and so what we did was we asked the winners of the competition, and there had to be just a winner, two, well, actually it was two winners, uh, GKMP architects, really good, check them out, and a student group called Moniker. We asked them to take the idea and communicate it, so to develop actual layouts for Dominic Street, one plot. And in this piece of communication, we asked the question, what if you could build your own home five minutes from O'Connell Street? That, that was a very persuasive document because, as I said, designers are very good at communicating. So we needed to take it a bit further. We need needed, we needed to take, do the execution part, the make it happen part. The problem with Dominic Street is it's not going to be available for a while. We, City Council, have to build the private, the, the public homes that are going to unlock the private site. That's going to take a while. I personally would love to see Dominic Street, a street of Dublin houses. But we're going to have to find a way of testing it first. So the execution part. So what we did was we looked for a site that was available now on a scale that was manageable because we're going to have, we're going to, have to overcome numerous obstacles in actually delivering this. And the site that is available now and is right under our noses is a site on Fishamble Street. So what we did was we went back to GKMP and Moniker and said, right, communicate Dublin House on Fishamble Street. So that's what they've done. They've, again, they've looked at that particular site, just show, put together an example, one example of how it might be. How it might be will depend on the people who, who actually become part of this Dublin House, but they just need to show an example. And I suppose the question, would you build your own home five minutes from College Green, is a slightly easier question for people to answer, I admit that. So, essentially, I suppose, what the Dublin House idea, which we are now going to start implementing, is about is, well, it's a piece of urban acupuncture. It's just a small-scale project that hopes to deliver big change. And also, ultimately, it's one of those silly hope value projects, which will answer the question, hunger, opportunity, permission, and execution. Thank you. Thanks, Ali. Um, I'll just tell you now briefly about a couple of things that we'll have in the lobby. Um,